What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Today it is the Lazy Days channel and we're back at it again with some more history reaction for you guys today and we have some more epic history TV's content and it's the Napoleonic Wars series and we've got Napoleon's Spanish ulcer, Spain 1809 to 1811. We're really enjoying this series over this channel. It's really yeah. interesting to see what sort of uh, Napoleon uh, has done. Apparently, we're now sort of on the downfall of his sort of reign. So yeah, his first defeat and his last major victory. Yeah, so we will have a look at see what sort of happens from here. If you're enjoying our content, then please like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. A link for Epic History TV content will be down below down low down below <laughs> and like i said please subscribe and we're just going to jump straight into this one let's do this <clears throat> this war was my downfall napoleon bonaparte in 1809 Napoleon Bonaparte, Emperor of the French, was at the height of his power. He had just won another crushing victory against Austria at Wagram, and imposed a humiliating peace treaty. But the war he'd started in Spain and Portugal, with his ill-judged invasion the previous year, continued to rage. Okay. Napoleon had placed his own brother, Joseph, on the Spanish throne, uniting a proud country against him. His troops had dealt ruthlessly with popular uprisings, while routing a succession of Spanish armies. In February 1809, Marshal Lann overcame the heroic defence of Zaragoza in a brutal siege that cost 54,000 Spanish lives Ooh. and 10,000 oh French. God. Yeah. But still, the Spanish and Portuguese remained defiant. And three months after their escape from Coruña, the British were back. In April, Sir Arthur Wellesley... We always return. <laughs> yeah, we always <laughs> return. Portuguese army. We love British a little Red meddling. Would fight alongside Portuguese troops, who, with the help of British training, would soon prove themselves highly effective. Mm, very decent. Three weeks after arriving in Portugal, Wellesley moved against Marshal Soult's 2nd Corps, okay. which had recently taken Porto. Soult and his troops, preoccupied with plundering the region, had no warning of the British mm. advance, and were soon in headlong retreat back through the mountains into Spain. Spain is a country where small armies are defeated and large armies starve. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Henry the fourth of France. Fifth. Uh, yeah, it's the fourth. The I is before the V. It's the fifth, isn't it? Mm. V-I. Oh, no, I no, yeah. Yeah, I-V. <laughs> That's fucking, no, I've got Roman numerals on my arm. Yeah, I know, you started looking at it. No, it's <laughs> four. Wait, what? Uh, Henry the fourth of France, 15, 53, 16, 10. Having secured Portugal for the time being, Wellesley planned a joint campaign with General Cuesta, commanding the Spanish army of Extremadura. On the 10th of July, the two commanders met at Casas de Miravete to discuss strategy. Relations between these two allies were not straightforward. Spain and Britain had a long history of conflict. Okay. The Spanish were deeply suspicious of British intentions mm, in Spain. Yeah. <laughs> while the British had a low opinion of the Spanish army, which they considered poorly trained and badly led. Wellesley's request to take over command of Spanish forces was rejected. Yeah, I understand. But the generals that. agreed mm -hmm. to a joint advance up the Tagus Valley towards Madrid. That's fair. Yeah. To be supported by General Venegas advancing from La Mancha. In the face of their advance, Marshal Victor's 1st Corps withdrew to Talavera, where he was joined by King Joseph and General hmm. Sebastiani's 4th Corps. The French plan was for Joseph's army to defend Madrid, while Marshal Soult led 3 Corps down from the north to get behind and trap the Anglo-Spanish forces. Okay, so it's a good plan in theory. But Joseph, mm. worried by Soult's slow progress, 
and General Venegas's advance on Madrid decided to attack at Talavera. Okay. 30,000 British troops, some 150 leagues from the sea, against 100,000 of the best troops in the world. My God, Napoleon. The Battle of Talavera saw British infantry bear the brunt of the French assault. They stood firm and mm. repelled the enemy with disciplined musket fire and bayonet charges. Go on, boys. Yeah, go on, boys. Talavera was a small battle compared to the great clashes fought that year in Austria. But it proved that under Wellesley, Britain's small, well-drilled army was a force to be reckoned mm. with, even though in the short term, victory achieved little. Warned yeah, of Soult's approach of from captured yeah. dispatches, the victorious Anglo-Spanish army retreated. While King Joseph and Fourth Corps marched against Venegas's army, which they smashed at the Battle of Almonacid. Okay. They've got the power and the skill, the French. That autumn, the Supreme Junta in Sevilla, Free Spain's effective government, raised two new armies for another attempt to liberate Madrid planning to converge on the capital from north and south. But Wellesley, ennobled as Viscount Wellington for his victory at Talavera, had been so disgusted by the lack of Spanish cooperation that summer that he refused to risk his army. Predictably, Spain's inexperienced armies met with disaster. Oh, no. At Ocaña, they it's suffered their biggest the defeat of the war when a smaller force under Marshal Soult routed the Spanish army, taking 14,000 prisoners mm. and 50 oh. cannon. A week later, the army of the left was heavily defeated oh, no. at Alba de Tormes. Okay, now it's actually not too bad. There was more bad news when Girona fell to the French Ooh. after an epic seven-month siege. The Supreme Junta's they plans just... to retake Madrid were in tatters. It's just interesting. In southern Spain, was now wide open to French attack. Oh dear. Yeah, oh dear indeed. My object is not to obtain submission by force, but to dispel illusion. I will arrive at a uniform of hearts. Joseph Bonaparte. Hmm. In January 1810, King Joseph marched south with an army of 60,000 men. Spanish resistance evaporated. Hmm. Spain's Supreme Junta was overthrown in a coup as Cordoba well, and then. Sevilla fell without a fight. Oh my. Joseph, who still hoped to win over the Spanish with his progressive reforms, was welcomed by many as a savior from anarchy. Only Cadiz held out its defences reinforced by a British naval squadron, and was besieged by Victor's first corps. Meanwhile, May, Napoleon sent not... Marshal Massena to Spain that with 65,000 reinforcements. He was reckoned one of Napoleon's that's best it. marshals, yeah. and had just been made Prince of Essling not... for his heroics in the recent war against Austria. Massena was to lead a third French invasion of Portugal, take Lisbon and chase the British back into the sea. He laid siege to Ciudad Rodrigo, a fortified city controlling one of the main routes into Portugal, which surrendered after two weeks bombardment. Wellington, with only 33,000 men to face Massena's 50,000, retreated. Massena crossed the Portuguese frontier and besieged Almeida. Mm. After just 13 hours of bombardment, a lucky French shot hit the Portuguese magazine. 70 tons of gunpowder went up in a devastating explosion <gasps> that made all further resistance useless. A lucky shot! A lucky shot hit their armoury and it just blew up 70 tons. That's insane. <laughs> I can't... What a shot! What Mate, a shot! What a shot, just ending there after 13 hours. Imagine just seeing that explosion and just going... 
think we did it. Can you <laughs> imagine arguing with the lads when you're loaning that cannon, you fire it, you argue, and then you just hear that. That's it, like, like, like one of them's gone, no, we need to be doing this way. And you're like, no, it's this, it's this, you fire it. And you just turn around, you're like, told you so. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, A lucky French shot hit the Portuguese magazine. 70 tons of gunpowder went up tons. in a devastating explosion that made all further resistance oh, useless. God, I wouldn't want to live there. It was a serious blow to Wellington, who'd been relying on Almeida's strong defences to buy him time. Mm -hmm. At Busaco, he found a strong defensive position. And I'm sorry, but there is no point in calling yourself a strong position if someone, <laughs> especially the French, can get a lucky shot on your armoury. I thought we had had some progress here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there was some genuine progress there. No, with you, and then you go, oh. <laughs> and you go, especially the French. I mean, I'm not being funny, but the fact they pulled off that shot was incredible, right? Uh. And it just goes to show that Napoleon's troops are still really hitting hard. Yeah, man. And they yeah, are yeah. just showing a force that is just and unstoppable. Like, again, it's just showing that his commanders are doing just as well as him. Yeah. Napoleon's not doing these parts. He's, he's not there yet. Yeah, it's just his army. It's the way he's set up, the way he's, he's trusted certain people in there. Yeah. So it really does show like the strength of his military strength. They really have the knowledge behind them to go yeah. for it. And made a stand. Masena's uphill frontal attack failed, at a cost of 4,000 casualties. But the next day, the French found a way to outflank Wellington's position, and his retreat continued. As Masena's army oh no. neared Lisbon, his scouts reported something completely unexpected. Stretching across the Lisbon Peninsula, protecting the city from attack, they found a new chain of fortifications in two major lines. Known as the Lines of Torres Vedras, the British and Portuguese had been constructing these mm. defences for more than a year. Now the lines yeah. bristled with more than a hundred forts, redoubts and batteries, manned by 30,000 troops well and 250 guns. Oh. <sighs> Massena soon discovered the lines were far too strong for him to attack. Yes. Smart. What's more, That's very a smart, smart strategy had stripped the surrounding countryside of anything that might help the French. Hmm. While Portuguese yeah. partisans and, uh, attacked French tactic. supply columns as they struggled through the mountains to reach Massena's army. Massena faced a grim predicament. Starved of supplies, too weak to attack, unwilling to retreat. Mm. Oh, yeah, but throughout this standoff, it was Portuguese peasants who suffered most of all. When their villages and farms were burned, many took refuge in Lisbon, oh, God. where thousands died of starvation mm. and disease. It's just waiting it out, isn't it? Yeah. It's always waiting it out. So, Prince of Eslin. You are no longer Messina. 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 So yeah. So, so Prince of Eslin, you are no longer Messina. Napoleon to Marshal Messina. Butchered it, but you know. We try, guys. We try. <laughs> we try. Napoleon had been preoccupied with his divorce from the Empress Josephine and then a new marriage to Archduchess Marie Louise, daughter of the Emperor of Austria. She was now expecting their first child. Okay. Nevertheless, so from Paris, Napoleon now. sent frequent orders to his marshals in Spain and Portugal, urging them to take more aggressive action. But when these orders arrived weeks later, they were usually out of date and showed little understanding of the problems his marshals faced. He now ordered Soult, based in Andalusia, to go on the offensive to draw enemy forces away from Lisbon, so Massena could take the city. Soult laid siege to Badajoz, a fortified city that controlled the southern route into Portugal. When 12,000 men of the army of Extremadura marched to its relief, they were routed by Soult, after which right. the city tamely surrendered, giving up 8,000 prisoners vast quantities of stores. 
Okay, so that's a good win from the It was another heavy blow to Spain's armed forces. But remarkably, despite such disasters and their many blundering generals, the Spanish troops remained willing to fight. The courage of the rank and file undimmed. Mm. That's that's good morale. Yeah, that is good morale. Victor's first corps besieging Cadiz had now been so weakened to support other operations that the Anglo-Spanish garrison decided to attack. The Allies landed along the coast to strike at the French siege lines from the rear. But they were ambushed by the French at Barossa. Despite heavy losses, the Anglo-Portuguese rearguard fought off the enemy. But a furious falling out between British commander Sir Thomas Graham mm. and his Spanish counterpart General La Peña threw away any advantage. Soon, <sighs> alarmed at these developments, marched back to Andalusia. Meanwhile, Massena, out of food and with no prospect of reinforcement, had no option but to retreat. Wellington's army pursued, discovering evidence of several appalling atrocities committed by the French against Portuguese villagers. Mm. Oh, God. Yeah. There were running Disgusting. battles with the French rearguard, brilliantly commanded by Marshal Ney, until he was sacked by Massena for done criticizing it, his leadership. Yeah, true. <laughs> it's Having Disgusting. chased the French it's out of just, Portugal, yeah. Wellington besieged Almeida. Massena's army, now rested and reinforced, marched to its aid. The two armies clashed again at Fuentes de Onuro. In two days of heavy fighting, Massena failed to break through Wellington's position right. to relieve Almeida. The fortress fell the next week, mm. but to Wellington's fury, British bungling allowed most of the French garrison to escape. Okay. Massena had lost 25,000 men in Portugal. Now he'd lost Almeida too, and a string of bad decisions not least to bring his mistress with him on campaign, had cost him the respect of his uh, yes. The Marshal, whom Napoleon had once nicknamed the Dear Child of Victory, was recalled to France in disgrace, oh. never to hold senior command again. Wow. Napoleon sent Marshal oh, Wall so to replace him. So hard. Why on earth would you have brought your other half with you along on the oh. campaign? when every other guy can't do it. Mm. Instant hatred. Yeah, instant hatred. Instant hatred. You fool, you fool of a took. Fool of a took. The Marshal, whom Napoleon had once nicknamed the Dear Child of Victory, never was recalled to, to that, France like. in disgrace, never to hold senior command again. Yeah. Napoleon sent Marshal Marmont to replace him. Meanwhile, Marshal Beresford, the British commander of Portugal's army, was sent to retake Badajoz with 20,000 British and Portuguese troops. When Soult approached with a relief force, Beresford marched to meet him at Albuera. It was one of the bloodiest battles of the war, around 6,000 casualties on each side with more than a third of the British infantry killed or wounded. Is that a kid? Or is yeah. that... Yeah, yeah, you would have kids and like 13, 14 year old. Jesus! Like, like they would oh, run running ammo and run and ammo yeah. and doing all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Infantry killed, yeah. wounded or captured. Marshal Soult declared, There is no beating these troops, in spite of their generals. I always thought they were bad soldiers. Now, I'm sure of it. Hmm. I had turned their right, pierced their center, and everywhere victory was mine. But they didn't know how to run. Soult had been checked, wow. but he was determined to save Badajoz. The newly arrived Marshal Marmont marched to his aid, and they advanced again. This combined army forced the British to abandon the siege. But when Wellington withdrew to a strong defensive position across the Portuguese border, Soult and Marmont did not pursue. French commanders in Spain had learned grudging respect for Wellington and for the steadiness of his troops. 
starting to yeah. learn. Now, yeah. The war in Spain had entered stalemate. They've got so much of it though. Like that was literally him. Like yeah. he'd never been checked like that. <laughs> Spain. General's fortune. Officers ruin. Soldiers death. French barracks graffiti. Now that that's interesting. Mm -hmm. That is interesting. While British, French and Spanish armies crisscrossed Spain and Portugal. Another war was fought every day in the mountains, hills okay. and woods. What's going on here? From 1808, Spanish and Portuguese civilians. From 1808, Spanish and Portuguese civilians, militias and ex-soldiers began taking up arms against the hated French invader. They waged a war of ambushes and hmm. hit and run raids, known in Spanish as La Guerrilla, the Little War. Its okay. fighters became known in English as guerrillas. Guerrillas. Britain's Royal Navy supplied vital weapons, stores, and money, nice. often landing them behind enemy lines. Much of Spain's Mate. rugged countryside fell under the control of the guerrillas. Nice. North of Madrid, Juan Martín Diez, an ex-soldier known as El Empecinado, the stubborn, led a guerrilla band 6,000 strong. Ooh. In Navarre, Esposito, like <laughs> a former peasant, ran a highly organized band that caused havoc for the French, capturing convoys and couriers on the strategic Burgos Bayon road, and branding Viva Mina on the forehead of collaborators. Mm. I like him. Yeah. While in the west, Julian Sanchez, known as El Charo, led the self styled Lanceros de Castilla. El Charo himself wore a French hussar's cap, its eagle symbolically turned upside down. <laughs> there were dozens more bands operating across Spain, though a few were no better than bandits, terrorising civilians as often as the enemy. Mm. The guerrilla war was merciless, marked by hideous atrocities on both sides. A French soldier's greatest fear was to be taken alive by the guerrillas who often tortured their prisoners before killing them. Tens of thousands of French troops were tied down by this people's war, Whoa. guarding outposts That's scary. or patrolling the countryside. The Mate. roads were so dangerous for French messengers that they required cavalry escorts of 200 men or more. Whoa. Many still didn't get through, their valuable dispatches forwarded to Wellington, for whom they became an invaluable source of intelligence. Mm. The war in Spain would ultimately cost the lives of 240,000 French soldiers. Oh my god. As was typical in wars of this era, most died from disease. But more died fighting guerrillas than in battle against the British and Spanish armies. In battle, 455. That is in take, take the, um, yeah. Uh, Forty-five thousand. So a hundred and eighteen thousand died from sickness, accidents, or other causes. Guerrilla war. The guerrilla war took nearly eighty thousand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in the, like the guerrilla wars, like the war for yeah, the yeah, civilian yeah. uprising. They took seventy-six thousand six hundred and fifty lives, but in battle it was only forty-five thousand. Nearly double. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, they were ruthless. Mm -hmm, mm hmm And obviously there'd be a lot worse ways as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's insane. Yes. And I think However, that's just soldiers. it was the twin threat, a well-led no, regular army under like Wellington French, yeah. and a popular insurgency that left the French facing an impossible strategic dilemma. If their armies remained dispersed to fight the guerrillas, Wellington could attack. But if they concentrated to defeat Wellington in battle, huge swathes of the okay. country would quickly fall to the Napoleon's old tactic. This Swift was victory. Napoleon's Vietnam, oh. or his bleeding ulcer, as he called it. Mm. A war that cost his empire an average of 100 casualties every day, with little prospect wow. of victory. And in 1812, as Napoleon launched his gigantic invasion of Russia, 
Wellington and the guerrillas launched their own offensive that would turn the war in Spain on its head. Oh no. Um, oh, it's always people's mistakes. It's like, mistakes, it's their own, it's their little voice in their head going, no, we don't need to listen to him. We don't need why to why, to why take now. on two fronts, deal with one problem you, before yeah, you, you fucking make another problem? You don't need to deal problem. with Russia. Russia isn't oh, an issue at the minute. I think it is an issue. We're just missing something. But yeah. hopefully we will find out in the next episode. If you guys are enjoying our content, then please like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we're going to catch you in the next one. See you in a bit.